Okay, we're going to start off with a short seminar that covers the fundamental of image quantification and the types of image quantification we can do within Fiji. And the first place we're going to start is with image intensity and using thresholds. So we covered in the Fiji for Beginners workshops, those that attended, uh, this intensity graph over here on the, on the right hand side and how this relates to the microscope image. So, here we've got on the x-axis the intensity values. This is on an 8-bit range from 0 to 255 grayscale values. So up here that's 8-bit. This can also be, for example, a 12-bit, 4,095 grayscale values, or 16-bit, 65,000 grayscale values. And in Y, we're looking at the distribution of pixels with that intensity. So for this image here on the left-hand side, you can see a lot of the information is in the low intensity ranges. So this is all the black background here. And the further to the right we move, we're going into the higher intensity regions here. So what we're going to use it quite a bit in our image analysis is to identify different regions within the image based on their intensity. And we're going to use a threshold for doing that. Okay, so we're still using this intensity graph here. What we're saying is we want to highlight the bright sections within this image. So in this image here, we've got our blue channel, which is DAPI stain highlighting nuclei, and we want to just uh, highlight those bright pixels. So this is what we call an inclusive threshold. So we are highlighting anything uh, within this red box here between the intensity values of 56 and 255 grayscale values. And you can see that highlighted in the red on the right hand side here. We can also do the opposite. We can look at exclusive or dark pixels. So again, in this case, we're looking in the red box and highlighting that, and that's anything between an intensity value of zero to 38 is highlighting our background, background values. We can go one step beyond that and create a binary image and also do image segmentation. And these are some of the uh, hands-on demonstrations that we'll do in a second. Okay, so to create a binary image, which is what we have on the right-hand side here, we're going to use a threshold to identify the regions that we want to highlight. But we're then going to convert that into a binary image. Now, what I mean by a binary image is a one-bit image. So the background is no intensity, and the regions selected are maximum intensity. So for an 8-bit scale, uh, that's 0 or 255. It's a one-bit image, and we're going to use this basically to tell the software, analyze within these regions, and give us the quantitative readout. Now we can go one step further on this, and we can combine the binary and grayscale images to uh, generate object-specific mass. So in this case, we've got an area of cells, and we've been able to actually separate out the individual cells within this picture. And again, this is one of the activities that we'll do. We can then use the masks to say, analyze all the quantitative feedouts about this cell, this cell, this cell, and so on within the image. Another tool we might use is image arithmetic. So this is doing mathematical functions or something we call Boolean logic between two images. Now this is really useful for combining binary masks or removing objects we don't want within an image or highlighting other objects. And there's some examples on the right hand side there of some of the different tools that we can use. So I've got a few examples and for this I've got two separate images, one called slide1.tiff and one called slide2.tiff. Uh, basically I have an 8-bit range image with the plus, minus, multiply, and divide symbols. And the only difference between slide1.tiff and slide2.tiff are that the multiply and divide symbols are missing in slide2.tiff. You'll also notice that the plus and divide have the same intensity value and the multiply and minus have the same intensity value. So what we're doing with these image arithmetic is we're going to each pixel in both of the images and in this case, we're going to add the intensity values uh, at those pixels together. So the result of an add in this case is that the plus and minus uh, uh, symbols will double in intensity. So we're adding those two values together, whereas the multiply and divide symbols uh, will stay at the same value. So if we're 
adding zero from the second image onto the first image. Similarly, if we do the same thing, but we're subtracting, now we can see that the bottom symbols, there's no change in intensity because we're subtracting zero. In this case, we're subtracting the same value from here, so that's actually uh, zero, so there's no symbols at the top there. In the multiply case, this becomes a little bit more complicated, so in this case, we can see that the plus and the minus symbols are obviously getting brighter, but you'll notice we were on an 8-bit scale here in the original images, and because we're multiplying these together, we've had to increase the bit depth, so now we're on a 32-bit image. And in this case, for the lower symbols, because we multiplied by 0, that's giving us 0 down here. For the divide, that's also a little bit complicated, so because we're dividing by 0, this gives us infinity. And in this case, the top symbols, we're dividing these from these, that should give us 1, right? But because we're on a 32-bit scale, we actually have intensity values of 1 here, but we just can't see them because of the size of the scale that we're on. The next tools we can use are Boolean logic. And one example of this is a logical AND. In this case, we're looking at objects which are in both images. So you can see the intersect between the two uh, images there. In this case, the 1 AND 2 gives us the plus and the minus symbols. We also have logical OR, which is in one image or the other image, in this case all objects, which in the 1 OR 2.tif image is giving us all four of those objects. In the logical XOR, that's an exclusive OR. They are in one image or the other image, but not in both. So in this case, we're only getting the multiply and divide symbols. Now we can use those to, to remove objects out of our, our images that we want to analyze. One other tool you might use a bit of is filtering, and again there's some examples on the right hand side of how we can do that. Some of the ones that we'll um, highlight in the next few slides are noise removal, edge detection, and background correction. So, first one is median filter. This is really useful if you've got very noisy images, uh, and this will basically uh, median out the, the noise effect. And what it's going to do is replace that middle pixel in here with the median intensity of those surrounding pixels. So the one downside of this is if you have a lot of pixels in your images, it can take a bit of time to do the mathematics uh, to perform the median filter. Uh, next tool which you may use, again it's ideal if your background is even before you start, um, but if you do have an uneven background then uh, you can use a filter within Fiji to, to remove that and try and even out the, um, the illumination. The benefit of this is it's a bit easier to do a threshold, so if you're doing an intensity breast threshold, uh, if you're drawing a line say across the middle here, you're actually going to miss a couple of the objects, whereas if you did the same thing now across here you would actually identify them. So better to set up your microscope properly so you don't have to correct the background, but if you do, there is a tool for that. Another tool we'll use a bit in the cell segmentation is the find maximum tool. So if we look again at this image of nuclei in the bottom left hand corner here, if you think of the intensity of the nuclei as a little hill, what we're finding is the tallest point of that hill and putting a cross mark. So that's what we call point selection. Uh, you can also use a segmented particles tool, which is what we'll use in the cell segmentation to actually draw lines in between the objects and try and separate those out. Another tool is edge detection. <clears throat> so rather than trying to identify the top of the hill here, we're trying to find the point where uh, the intensity goes up uh, the most from the background and draw a line around that, which can be very useful. And another tool we use quite a bit are binary options. So once we've created our binary objects, we can still play around with them a little bit. Uh, so there's an option to perform what we call a dilate, which is to add pixels uh, from the edge of objects. 
One of the first activities we'll do is to make sure our binary options settings are correct. So this count is how many pixels we're adding and iterations is how many times we're doing that. We'll make sure that ours are set to one and one. Uh, the other option is a road, which is removing pixels from edges of the objects. So we've got some examples of what that would do from the original blobs image. This is the dilate, obviously slightly larger, and this is the erode, which is slightly smaller. We can combine these two uh, tools together. So we can perform what we call an open, which is an erosion followed by a dilation, or a close function, which is a dilation followed by an erosion. Now you would think that they did very similar things, uh, but actually it turns out that the open smooths objects and removes isolated pixels. So if you look at the example down here, we've got a little isolated pixel here, uh, which is now gone in our final image. So it could be very useful for getting rid of smaller objects that we don't want to analyze. Or the close is also going to smooth objects, but also fill in gaps. So you know, if these two objects should actually be part of one, uh, you can use that to join things back up together again. Okay, um, we're here because we want to learn how to measure and read out quantitative analysis. Now in Fiji, the tools you're going to use most for that are the measure or analyze particles tools. So next few slides, I'm just going to go through what all the functions are within those tools. Okay, so measure, uh, to call up the, the measure um, function, we need to go to analyze measure. That's control M on a PC or command M on a Mac. Uh, but before we do that, we need to define what we want to measure, and that's under Analyze Set Measurements, and brings up this dialog box on the right-hand side here. So you can see there's a lot of different functions there. I'm going to spend the next few slides just going through those and explaining what they are. So right at the top here, we've got Area. That is the area of our selection, and that will be in whatever set units you have in your image. So if your image isn't calibrated, that will be in pixels, if it is calibrated, then it'll be in microns or millimeters or whatever the calibration units are that your image is calibrated with. An important thing here is if you're using a threshold, you need to hit the limit to threshold button. Otherwise, it will give you the area of your entire image. That's especially important for this area fraction tool, uh, which is going to work out what the percentage of threshold pixels in your entire image is. This comes back as 100, then you know that you've forgotten to hit the limit to threshold button. One of the uses for this is calculating confluency, and we'll do that as one of the hands-on activities. Next measurements we have are intensity. Uh, so we've got integrated density, gives us two readouts. So the raw integrated density is the sum of intensity units in the selection. And the integrated density is the mean gray values multiplied by the area. The mean gray value is giving you your average intensity units in the selection, and that's essentially your raw integrated density divided by the number of pixels. You can also read out the minimum gray values in your selection and the maximum gray values. The modal gray value, which is the top of your um, intensity graph here. The median point, which is the middle of your distribution and also the standard deviation, so you get a feel for how the, um, how the intensity is varying over your region that you've selected. We can also read out shape descriptors. So we've got things like circularity, where a perfect circle is 1, and anything less than a perfect circle is less than 1. There's an equation here if you want to try and work out how that works. Uh, we have the aspect ratio, so we'll fit uh, an ellipse to the particle that you've identified, and that will read out major and minor axis. So in this case, this would be your major axis, and this would be your minor axis. We have roundness, which is an inverse of your aspect ratio, and then we have something called solidity, which is your area of your convex area. So for something circular like this, your solidity would be one, or very, very close to one, whereas something for this star structure here it would be less than one. So the area in this case would be the area within the black region, and your convex area is, I always think of wrapping an elastic band around this, um, and that 
area within the elastic band would be your convex area. So it gives you a really nice, I guess, complexity readout for your um, for your shape. We can also measure out location, so where the center of mass is, and that's uh, brightness weighted x and y positions. Uh, so in this case, we've got centroid, which is the center of your point uh, of your area that you've selected. Center of mass. In this case, you can see there's more red intensity in this top right-hand corner, so it's weighted across to, to that corner. We have perimeter, which is the length around the boundary of your uh, of your object you've selected, and then you've got ferrets diameter, which is the longest distance between two points on that boundary. Next thing is bounding box. Uh, so bounding rectangles is the smallest rectangle you can draw that will enclose your selection. And again, you'll get uh, the dimensions of that box. Uh, we also have fit ellipsoid, and again, you'll get the dimensions of the ellipsoid. And you can also read out the stack position, so what channel, what slice, or what time in a stack or a hyperstack. Uh, we can then look at intensity distribution. So there's one called skewness, which looks at how symmetrical the distribution is. Is it evenly distributed? Was it more asymmetric to the left or the right? Or kurtosis, which is kind of the flatness. So is, does it have a Gaussian distribution, or is it flatter than normal or more peaked than, than normal? OK, so that was the analyze measure function. Um, We'll be doing a lot of work with analyzed particles as well. So if you're ever trying to identify things like cells or nuclei or you know nanoparticles within a within a cell or something, then you'll want to use the analyzed particles tool. Now this is the dialog box that comes up, and there's a lot of different functions on there. First of all, it gives us the ability to filter out particles based on size. So in this case, we're not filtering anything, and we're going from zero all the way up to infinity. Uh, we can also filter out based on shape, so circularity. Again, we're not filtering anything here, 0 to 1. And then show is our output, so what are we going to produce in terms of an image? And there's a bunch of different options here, which I'll go through in a couple of slides times. And underneath, it shows us, again, what we want to produce. Do we want to display results in terms of our measurements that we want to read out? Do we want to clear any old results that are still there? Do we want to summarize the data for all the particles that we've identified? And one we'll use quite a bit is exclude on edges here. So we don't want to, if area is one of our readouts, we don't want to read out anything that's touching the edge of the image. Okay, so these are some of the options in terms of filtering that we can do. And we're going to go through a few examples. So this is one of the demo images within Fiji called Demo Blobs. And here we've got some of the different tools and filtering steps. So in this case, we're excluding on edges, so anything that touches the edge of the image will be removed. In this example, we've got include holes, so you'll see there's a few objects here which have holes which are then filled in. In this example, we are filtering based on size, so anything that's between 0 and 50 pixels and is fairly circular, so it has a circularity between 0.5 and 1. That's producing or selecting and showing just the small circular objects. Over here, we're not filtering based on size at all, but circularity. So in this case, anything that's between 0 and 0 0.5, so not very circular. So we're identifying these larger elongated structures within this demo blobs image. You can go even more specific and go to 0.3 to 0.5. So again, we're identifying things which are fairly globular, but not the ones which are uh, longer and straighter. You can do the inverse of that and go from 0 to 0 0.3, where we're highlighting just the elongated objects. And again, we can filter um, rather than identifying the small circular objects, we can identify the larger ones by again filtering based on size of so 50 pixels to infinity pixels. So hopefully you can see that those two filtering steps will allow you to actually get rid of things within your particles that you've identified that you don't want to include in your analysis. 
this is the show function, so images that we can produce when we run the analyze particles. So again, this is our original image, which has been thresholded. The outlines function draws an outline around the particles and gives a number to each of them. The bare outlines will do the same thing, so an outline but without the numbers. We can use it to create a new mask. We can also show the ellipses which were fitted around our objects. Count masks produces a different color for each of the objects that we've produced. We've got overlay outlines, which overlays the outline and a number over the top of the original image. And also overlay masks, which again creates the mask with a number over the top of the original image.